How you doing, Dave? Not bad, Bob. Not bad at all. I'd like to introduce Dave Allen, basically the founder of martial arts in Huddersfield. I've been training for a long, long, long time now. Dave, how long's it been? Started in 1964 on a beginner's, short to can beginner's course at Huddersfield Judo Club. Uh, stopped there till I was yellow belt, and then I moved on and I joined Phil Milner. We formed the Oxford Midlands Oriental Arts Society. There were Phil Milner, myself, and Walter Seaton, and a guy called Colin Edwards. And that was the forerunner to the IBA. Um, I left the IBA at one stage and went back to the UKKW, uh, trained under Suzuki, Maida, Sakagami, Kitamura. As time went on, I felt I wanted to go my own way mm. and um, still kept my contacts with Phil, still trained with him. I regard him as my chief instructor. Yes, well, he's a good chief instructor yeah. to have in today. How have you seen martial arts change over the year? Would you say it's changed for the better or changed for the worse? Certainly changed for the better. Um, people now realise that everybody has got to go to work the next day. Mm. When I started, broken legs, broken noses were quite common. We've now got the safety aspect where people want to train on mats and have to train on mats. Uh, I think a lot of the cowboy elements disappeared, but obviously from time to time, some will reappear. As they do, yes. But they won't last. Mm. But good martial artists, and no need to bad mouth them. Yes. Because the students will find out themselves where the good clubs are and the good masters are. OK. Yourself, you're very much into the jiu-jitsu element of martial arts and the self-defence, and you seem to steer away from the sporting element. Do you, do, how do you view the sporting element in comparison to the street? Sporting element's very good. I think it's good for development. But again, you get the sporting element, you get the politics. And I do not like politics. Yeah. I want everybody to train and just be in harmony. Yes. Um, but yeah, there is room for the sporting side. We've got to have it because people want to fight. And that is where they can fight. But the average guy in the street, he might not want to fight. So you teach him self defence the best as you can. Make it as real as you can. But that's not bound to work. Because you get black belts that's teaching self-defence that's never been attacked themselves. Yes. So then you get the fear factor, which there's many books about. Jeff Thompson's very good. He is. Uh, excellent. He knows the fear factor. I mean, for nine years, I served in West Yorkshire Special Constabulary. I've arrested people. I've also had my own security business for the last 20 years. Exactly. Not doormen, security officers patrolling shopping centres and working with guard dogs. You know, I've come across all sorts of people. And to be quite honest, I've been in fear sometimes. Yeah, but there's no so, courage without fear, is no, there? No, there isn't, no. So, no, to try and teach people and tell them that when they come to the actual attack, they won't be in fear. Yeah. Shouldn't be done. I mean... Uh, how, how, how yourself, how in your own mind have you handled fear when you've come into these confrontations? Because it's amazing, you don't feel like throwing a round house kick to the head, do you? Well, no, I mean, depending on the situation, you tend to talk. And if people talk, and you keep your distance, you don't let them get inside that little square that you've got in mm. front of you. Did, could you tell us about the most, uh, let's say, intimidating situation you've ever been in, Dave, and how did, how did you actually handle it? The most intimidating situation was walking into a building site cabin one night and you could feel somebody was there. And uh, fortunately I had a dog with me, I let the dog go, and he dragged a bloke from under a table with a carving knife. If I hadn't have had that dog, the guy had known I'd been there because he would have seen me torch. But while the dog is dragging a body about in a dark cabin, yeah, you get that certain bit of fear and confusion, wondering what the hell's happening. Yeah. 
weird, strange. You showed us some techniques earlier, and yeah. uh, you pulled on the uh, power of chi. Mm. I mean, to a lot of people, chi and ki, it's like, let's say, the mystic martial art stuff that doesn't really work. I mean, why do you think that such techniques and so many people talking about chi, ki nowadays, when as before, let's say, five, six years ago, they didn't seem to be doing? I think there's more books out on internal arts, and I think the Chinese has opened up yes. a lot more than they did um, 15, 20 years ago. I think a lot of it, Bruce Lee helped a lot. Because mm. before Bruce Lee, Kung Fu thought, people thought Kung Fu were a Chinese meal. Yeah. Uh, and it's I ordered only the, one last night. Yeah, it it's on. only the, the the Bruce Lee film that's opened it up. But you've got more people going to China now and they're fetching these things back yes. with them. Uh, there's more books on meditation, there's more people teaching meditation. Mm. Do you meditate yourself, Dave? Yeah. And how, how does that help you in the actual martial arts, do you feel? I feel it helps me because it's very calming. Mm. Uh, sometimes if I'm going to a class, and I've been working the night before, and you think, oh, God, I've got to go and train. Quarter of an hour's meditation, I feel relaxed, my mind's focused, and I'm into my class. Mm. Where do you see martial arts going for yourself over the next uh, few years? Myself, I see Zanshin martial arts growing because we're a multi-style group. <coughs> we have people from Aikido, kickboxing, all arts. You've got a big course on today, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. And... Uh, that's how I'd like it to see, completely non-police. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the course today, the Zanshin course. You've got lots of different instructors from different styles. Do you find the karate and the jiu-jitsu guys mix very well? I find that the jiu-jitsu guys and the karate guys and Aikido guys mix. Uh, we've got people today that's done Aikido and they've always fancied trying karate. Yes. So they go along to the karate group, they try it. And that the techniques that they teach and we teach are... 80% to 90% the same. Mm. Um, so there is a standardisation. There is, I think there? there is a standardisation in the martial arts. Mm. Uh, you get your various styles of jiu-jitsu, like you do karate, but it's end of the day, there's all, only so many ways you can kick, or as jiu-jitsu and aikido, mm. only so many ways you can bend an arm. Yeah, or manipulate the joints, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly, yeah. All right, Dave. Thanks a lot for yeah. the interview. Thanks much for the interview, me, Bob. Thank you very much. See ya. Cheers. Hello and welcome to next episode of Warrior Way. In this video, I'm going to show you martial arts from Okinawa. Now he's the 
chest. So bigger muscles, bigger area, easier. So come out to the side this way and then just coming down this way and up. Okay? 10 times, down up. Come up with your hand up here and just blocking. So up. what I would say, in my experience and also from the other senses I've trained with and the other senses from the other styles I've trained with, Okinawan Karate is very well known for being very powerful, uh, very strong, very precise um, and generally over a short distance. Uh, Gojuru, which is uh, the hard soft style, is again it's uh, close contact and has its roots from China and that way around. Um, whereas many of the Japanese styles they've come from Okinawa and then changed um, for many reasons. Training is to, we agree together, we respect each other, we make it work, okay? So when the hand comes in, remember we turn it. So as the arm is here, is in here, it's turned. This here, tension all the way up, tension here, tension here. Not this way, okay? Everyone can drink around. So, we hit. And of course, you do as hard as you can do together as a pair. Everyone can train because if the sensei is good, and it doesn't mean the sensei has to be particularly talented, but if the sensei is a good teacher, then they make sure they don't push the student too much until they're ready. So it just comes in, we just hit this way and try, let it uh, absorb in so we don't have too much bounce. Okay, and then we just keep on going. Like our style, and this is what's quite interesting about Okinawa, when particularly if you travel to Okinawa and train there, they are the equidistant between China and mainland Japan and the style of karate there's a lot of uh, stories because in the old days people didn't really write it down mm -hmm. so it's word of mouth and it's, it changes as you, as you speak but the more you learn and the more you read and the more you just are listening to what people are saying it's from India to China, China to Okinawa mm -hmm. and then from Okinawa to Japan now, Okinawans, they are of course a part of Japan, but they had for a long period of time, they weren't allowed to have any weapons. And that meant that they developed a certain style of, of, of combat, like every country in the world has their own style of combat. And the world famous one is, is Shotokan, and that's why Shotokan is, for example, over distance, mm -hmm. because they had weapons. Um, whereas the style we train here is more, um, it, it's kind of stayed, on Okinawa mm -hmm. um, and developed in its own time, its own way on Okinawa. And then back, probably in the 70s, uh, around about that time, there was a, a conscious decision made to send out ambassadors to the rest of Europe so they could learn this thing called karate. But you want this reflex, so you need to teach your body so that when it comes in, that you, you grab. And if it's the skin you grab, it doesn't really matter because it's self-defense, okay? The interesting thing, and this is just a personal thought, but when it goes around you know, to China, Okinawa, Okinawa, Japan, Japan to Europe, and then the Europeans wanted to go back to the source, so they went back to Japan, and then a lot of those, my sensei from England, for example, is ex Shotokan, who's changed to Gojuru, because his story was he went to Japan to train Shotokan, and then he heard of this man called Higona Sensei, who was our master, um, who's quoted as being the most dangerous man in a, in a real fight situation. And he went to his dojo, the Yoyogi Dojo in Tokyo. And a lot of people changed, actually, from Shotokan to Goju then. And then, 
kind of full circle, then it went back to Okinawa. So it's mm -hmm. kind of gone around and then, and then back again. Yeah. Interesting. The Starway Train is self-defense. Uh, this is why we do uh, Uli Tanrin. We, we, we strengthen our, our bones, um, it, the whole body, uh, the way we train. But of course we have the sports side of it too. So we have Kubiti, which is the, the fighting, and then we have uh, Kata. It's difficult to say. Some people prefer Kata, some people prefer to fight. Um, our style has developed more with Irikumi now, with, which is more continuous fighting, whereas a lot of the Japanese styles of Shiai, um, which is more when they're up on their feet, they're, they're very, very fast, and coming in, and maybe both sides are coming in and scoring, and the first person to score gets the point, and then Yame, the, the, the fight has stopped and they start again. Whereas in our style, it's just different, not better, just different. We just continue uh, and they it's just keep more cap, 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 cap. Yes. Okay. The students I have, they come from different styles. Uh, Genzeru, Shotokan, um, Kyokushin, Ashiha, whatever the style is. Some from my own style, of course. Um, but all of the ones from the other styles, and of course new beginners, have never seen this equipment before, which we would train. And again, this is very typically Okinawan. It's not Japanese, uh, it's Okinawan. And it's basically strength training for martial arts. Um, it's to make sure where we train with the chishi, uh, which is like a power stone, chi, ishi, power stone, that you're, you're developing strength in your, in your wrist, elbow, lats, shoulder is stabilized, your breathing is synchronized with the exercise, so that there's, there's, you develop focus and internal and external power. Um, and it's something that's very unique to the Okinawan styles. We have a lot of different things. We have nigirigami, which used to be old sake um, uh, jars, and that's because we're close contact. So we, when we're holding on, we need to have strong um, fingers. So if we want to grab here, we want to come in and grab uh, whatever it is, or we want to just block the technique, and then we're grabbing and, and pushing them off, whatever. So that's why we train them. An interesting thing actually is that in, in our style, um, when we make contact with a potential opponent, of course we want to avoid that, but in a self-defense situation, as soon as that contact is made, the idea is you don't let go until you're finished. And that doesn't mean you smash them like this. It's self-defense, you let go until the moment where you can run away or walk away or whatever you need to do. Yeah, but the other styles, uh, from my experience, and I've trained other stars, I've been lucky enough to train with Kanesawa Sensei and a lot of the others in Terry O'Neill and Kung Fu uh, masters too. And a lot of the stars, when they talk about it, they will uh, deliver the technique and then they create distance again. Even though for the mind, like in our style, it's interesting because you want to go into them, which your mind doesn't really want to do, your mind wants to go the other way. But you say if you keep creating distance, then the other person, you level the playing field and it's the same again. Whatever the style is, and you have to find the right one for, for you. There's no correct style. There's only, there are many styles and it's just different branches on the, on, on the same tree. So this was Gojiro Karate. It is a good combination between hard and soft techniques. This karate is designed mostly for self-defense and is mainly focusing on attacking weak spots of your opponent. In this martial arts you are focused for effective technique which can help you finish the fight how fast you can. Summarizing, I would like to thank Sensei K. Larsen for this training.